if he thinks it's going to ruin my day, well, just keep on going, and uh, Larry will keep on stepping. The, the reason I'm responding to this is not because I feel I can convince that guy of anything. He's, he's probably too, too far gone. But there are people who are listening who are kind of on the bubble. And really, when I say that the police are not killing black people just because they're black, you're really not quite sure. You just heard the show a little bit. You didn't hear all of it. You've heard some things that counter it. You're not quite sure. So I'm talking to you, not to that, not to that moron. Recent years, the police have killed an average of 1,000 people a year. This is a population of 350 million Americans. Some 40 million are black. I've heard the number 35, 35, 32. It's round in there. Okay? In the last 60 years, according to the Center for Disease Control, the rate at which the police have sh- killed, shot and killed blacks has declined 75%. Last year, near as we can figure it out, there were 25 unarmed black people killed. Not just shot and killed, but killed by many other ways. 25. At least as many unarmed whites have been killed by the police as unarmed blacks. Where's the outcry? Of all the police, of all the people the police kill, less than 4% are a white cop killing unarmed black person. And again, an unarmed person does not necessarily mean not dangerous. Michael Brown was unarmed, was perceived reasonably as dangerous. His DNA was found on the officer's gun. And, for example, when that immigrant was killed in New York some years ago, Amadou Diallo, uh, he was cornered. The police had a, a suspect who looked like him. They had the wrong guy, but they asked him to show his hands, and he reached into his wallet, uh, apparently to pull out his, reached into his pocket to pull out his wallet. The police thought he was going for a firearm, blew him away. Hillary pronounced the people who killed him murderers publicly, then later on apologized because there hadn't been a trial yet, hadn't been one word of testimony yet, and all of them were found not guilty by a multi-ethnic jury. So just because you are unarmed does not necessarily mean that you were not reasonably perceived as dangerous. So when you get down to those who are are unarmed and were not reasonably perceived as dangerous, you're talking about a tiny, tiny fraction. Even less than the 4% of all the people that are killed by the police. Now, when the gentleman says, well, there are far more uh, white people than there are black people, and and therefore I'm not quite even sure what what he's talking about. It is true that the police are two and a half times more likely to kill a black person than a white person. It's also true, unfortunately, that a young black male is anywhere from eight to ten times more likely to be a victim of a homicide than a young white male. That's why the cops are there. You go where the ducks are. Now, it turns out that of all the homicides in this country, 50% of them are black victims. And 94% of these black victims are were likely killed by other blacks. We say likely because some of these are unsolved, like in Chicago, where 75% of the homicides are unsolved. These are gang-related homicides. Not very likely that a white general did it, I'm just saying. And you look at cities like L.A., like New York, where the police departments, the, the staff, reflects the demographics of the city. I'm in L.A., L.A. is 40% Hispanic, as is the LAPD. L.A. is 30% Asian, uh, black, uh, Asian rather, as is um, white, rather, as is the LAPD. It's about 9% or so uh, Asian, excuse me, black, as is the LAPD. And the remaining are are Pacific Islanders or Asian Americans, as is um, Los Angeles. I mean, honestly, and I think I told you from 1992 to 2002, we had back-to-back black police chiefs. And one of them was a chief during the O.J. Simpson case. And because of the allegations that uh, all these racist uh, members of the LAPD had fabricated evidence to convict an innocent man, uh, Willie Williams, the then LAPD chief, the black man, as I mentioned, uh, did a full study to find out whether anybody had done anything inappropriate with respect to the O.J. Simpson case. And he found out nobody did. Put out a report. Nobody cared. I thought the whole point in having a black police chief was so that you'd have some sort of sense of trust that things are going to be done properly, that he's going to be at least sympathetic to black people. So here he is, new guy, uh, first black police chief, LAPD, does a study, nobody cares. The same black people who believe that O.J. Simpson was an innocent man framed by the racist LAPD continue believing that O.J. Simpson was an innocent man framed by the racist LAPD. It didn't matter. Black Lives Matter was formed because of the acquittal of George uh, Zimmerman, who killed Trayvon Martin. Well, there was a black alternate. He didn't serve on the jury, but he was a black alternate. And he said that had he been on the jury, he would have reached the same conclusion. 
Uh, and those jurors who did speak before the public said that race never came up. Now, the next incident that gave Black Lives Matter a lot of juice was Ferguson. Ferguson was a lie. Michael Brown did not have his hands up, did not say don't shoot. And here you have this, this uh, uh, organization getting all sorts of credibility because of this. Are you kidding me? In comes the DOJ under Obama. They do a study. The Ferguson PD is racist. Why? Well, 65% of the residents of Ferguson are, are black, but 85% of those who are stopped in traffic stops are black. Therefore, 18% gap ergo racism. Really? NYPD. 55% of those stopped in traffic stops are black. New York, 25% black. 30-point gap. Why isn't that uh, a bigger example of racism than Ferguson? Can't do it by that. You have to do it by whether or not the driver is offending. 